Okay. Call the meeting to order, review minute, meeting minutes, September 12th, 2018, and September 28th, 2018. Uh, oh, and I need to read my thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, right. It's it's basically we have to do roll call votes on every vote uh, because we have one uh, member of the board who is remote because of geographic challenges and unable to attend in person without a healthy commute. I'm embellishing on that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear us, Joyce? Yep. Okay, minutes from September 12 and September 8 to 28. Do I hear a motion? Yes. Second. All those in favor? Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yep. Me? Yes. Um, do we have comments from the public not listed on the agenda for a topic not listed on the agenda tonight? Uh, I'd like to make a, a comment in this section from, I guess, being chair of the Municipal Building Committee and speaking a little about the activity that went on Sunday. Uh, ribbon cutting, open house, and then the, the Historical Commission had, a, well, Historical Society had a fall festival. I guess I was very pleased with the turnout we had. I was figuring 150 people maybe were there. I uh, heard a lot of positive comments about the town hall, the building, the renovation that we, that we did. I guess and I'd like to thank everybody that showed up Sunday for that. It was a, was a nice, nice day. We had a short program. Uh, appreciate everybody's support for being there, for, for the fundraising activities, uh, for supporting the town hall during uh, our annual town meetings to support funding and all. I appreciate all, all of the, all the support that went into it. And I think so far I've heard just positive comments. Uh, for those that were not there, it's my understanding that FCAD is working on a presentation. They were there filming part of it. Uh, they still want to film some inside. So if you weren't there, I guess stay tuned and look on the YouTube site for a lift for a FCAT presentation. Yeah, so, it was a great event. Jonathan, do you want to say no, anything? No, I, I, it was a great event. There was a lot more people there than I anticipated. So right. kudos to whoever was, was building the crowd. I thought the speakers were excellent. Especially the first. Did you catch the speakers? Yes. yes. Dy dynamic, yeah, yes. Kennedy-esque, I heard. But yeah, that's yeah. your side. Okay. Which can be this question? Oh, Bobby. Of course. <laughs> no more had the high pitched voice. Than Bobby. Okay. All right. We digress. Uh, any other comments from the public? Old business. Town Hall Historic Rehabilitation Project. Project update. Is this thing almost done? <laughs> well, we opened it already, so it better be. Yeah. Do we um, <clears throat> yeah. There's still we're still working on some punch list items. Uh, Westfield Construction was up there today. Um, doing some adjustments to some of the doors, and um, there needs to be a couple, uh, a couple other items done that were requested from the building inspector uh, in the final inspection. So uh, I would say we're 98, 99 percent there, Fred. Right. Um, and then it's going to be some. Uh, there's going to be some. And Don, I'm not, I don't want to put you on the spot, so I won't. But if you want to type in, you can go ahead. Um, the friends of Town Hall are going to be donating some uh, audiovisual equipment. That, that's going to go inside the town hall. So, um, so that will be also taking place over the next, well, hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, but other than that, it, I think it's pretty ready to get its feet wet. Is it wired? It's wired. The wiring is done, right? For that's, that's actually, wires. That's, that's the wires. That's actually the delay. Oh. I mean, sorry, there isn't a delay. Today, I heard that all the equipment that we ordered has arrived and the, some minor electrical work has to be done in the town hall before we have Wasserman come in and install the equipment and uh, Brian's getting quotes for the electrical work. But I, I mean, I call Brian at noon today. <laughs> there is no delay. <laughs> it's just where we are. Okay, great. <laughs> let, let me add that the consequence of that will be that we'll lock a few more spaces. Uh, the projector for the auditorium will be locked in the uh, storage closet in the auditorium and we'll start locking the community room uh, when we have the flat panel display there. So people who reserve the community room, the smaller meeting room, will have to get that key as well as the front door key. Uh, okay. 
have you thought of uh, at least maybe an auditorium, your own uh, cabinet with a lock for the equipment rather than locking the whole storage? Yeah, I have to see the sizes. Uh, there'll be a video card. Yeah. Uh, and that may be too big. If you build a cabinet around it, you might not be able to maneuver in the closet. But we'll, we'll see about what we can lock there for the microphones, um, which would be the easily portable part of that. Uh, but we've got we're gonna have three microphone stands. We'll have uh, six mics, three wired mics, three wireless mics. Um, the electronics will be mounted on the stage, and that will be a locked cabinet. But the question is how to, and um, the question is what can we do in the closet in the auditorium uh, that could leave some access. Right now there's nothing that people need access to other than the AV stuff right. and the screens which haven't been installed because we have the strong windows up. Um, and we may never put those screens up because whether it's air conditioning or winter, we probably want the strong windows up. So Brian, is the building all wired? <coughs> Is it all, I guess, wired for the Wi-Fi and Comcast and all that, or is that still um, where we stand on that? There, there's internet to all of those data ports that are there. Okay. Um, we could probably still use one or two wireless routers to be installed. But where do we stand at moving the equipment from the center school over there? That's, uh, I don't think there's any equipment that's going from the center school to the town hall. Well, the FCAT, the FCAT stuff that's there for... I don't think that's ever going to go to the town hall. I think that equipment was, I don't, I don't put FCAT on the spot because I'll have to ask, I'll have to ask Chris, but I thought that the stuff from the center school was ending, ending up at the Deerfield Town Hall. Okay, so that can be shut down. I don't maybe it's basically going to be a realistic thing that there's going to be some hub there in the center town of Wheatley that communicates with Deerfield Town Hall. Um, whether it's located at the center school, the library, the town hall, uh, possibly any of those locations okay. are possible, but there should be, that equipment will have to reside somewhere, unless they change something about their system recently that um, that I don't know about. Um, it's not going to be brought there. <clears throat> yeah, it wouldn't come to the municipal offices of geographically too far away. It would have to be um, one of those three buildings that's kind of in the center of town there. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll follow up with uh, Chris Collins on what needs to be done there. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <coughs> the the veneer on the concrete block. Are we going after that? Yeah, that's one on the punch list. Yeah, that's okay. punch list item. I, I don't know if that, I don't think this is the first time, but uh, the AV equipment that the Historic Commission has purchased, I guess I'd like to thank you for for doing that and for dealing with Westman Associates to get the best equipment there. I guess I think the town appreciates all your efforts. The uh, manager showed show the best, the Friends of Town Hall. Yeah, it's not the historic. Okay, Friends of Town Hall. Okay, friend, the Friends of Town Hall for, for doing all of that for the for the town. I, I think we really appreciate yeah. that. Otherwise, we'd, yeah. be, we'd be out looking for a contractor to do that, so. Joyce? We got looking for money to do yeah, it. I was just going to say that I think Watson gave us a substantial discount as well. Yes. So yes. That, uh, I, I don't mind uh, acknowledging that in the public forum. Okay. Um, the, the only other thing that I wanted to talk about, and apparently it's a bigger hornet's nest than I would have imagined, um, but I've been approached by, and I'm sorry I didn't pay attention to this more closely when the project was being put together. I've been approached by more than a couple people now about the lack of handicap accessible parking in the front of the building. Um, I understand that the slope where the former handicap building or parking was is too great a slope for compliance purposes in front of the post office. However, um, <clears throat> There does, by my lay person eye, there doesn't appear to be a slope in the spot to the right of the ramp between the two buildings. And, <clears throat> and, and, and I do think that the optics of moving a handicapped parking space from the front of the building to the back slash rear of the building isn't a good optic. Um, 
and, and I think it merits a conversation about putting a handicap slot uh, in that in that spot <clears throat> to the left of, or to the right of the of the ramp area that is between the two buildings that goes to the sidewalk. I can I can comment on that, Jonathan. We've heard about that already. A comment uh, from other people as well. Uh, what we're going to do is there's going to be a sign put up in the parking lot on that driveway in front of the Smike's house telling people handicap parking is in the rear. Keith has agreed to put a sign there. He's also agreed to put some kind of sign by where you're talking in the front for uh, not handicapped but maybe disabled or whatever we call it, elderly people to park but there. Limited mobility. Limited mobility people to park there. Uh, <coughs> if we put a handicapped parking spot in the front, we're going to lose two spots, possibly three, because you need so much on each side of the handicapped parking space, and it has to be wider than what's there now for one space. So minimum, you're losing two and possibly three, because you need that walkway bigger. So to lose three spots for handicapped, I think the uh, building committee thought that it wasn't, wasn't justified. You've got three spots. Correct me, Brian, is it two or three in the back? Handicapped. Two, two, two in the handicapped One in, in the back. And the reason for being in the back is they were closer to the elevator, the lift, and we thought people that would be coming to, to use the second floor in the building would go towards the back to the lift. It's closer than, than going in the front, plus, and even in the wintertime, it would be closer to do that. So. Well, I, I, I think it's more, you know, the reality is that the post office is used much more frequently than, uh, than, than ta the town hall is. And uh, so the, the, the post office use has lost a handicap in, in the eyes of many. And I think I tend to agree with them. <clears throat> they've lost a handicap. They, they've had their handicap space moved to a less convenient location for post office use. Okay, but their handicap ramp is still there. We didn't, we didn't but touch the that. parking is not. Well, yeah. I don't know if parking is that much closer or that much further away. If well, you're going to put them on the other side, like you mentioned, in the front of the town hall, to go there around to their ramp rather than coming from the back of the building to their ramp, we're not talking much distance difference. I, I, don't, I don't see that. Okay, well, then I encourage you to talk with the people who have handicapped stickers on their cars across town because... I, I get it, and so I'd like to see about the limited mobility sign, and well, we're, yes, we're working on that. Like I say, it's and hopefully that will, and, and ask the townspeople to, to not use that space unless it's absolutely necessary. And hopefully the townspeople will understand that you know life is challenging enough for people with limited access and limited mobility. Paul, you're yeah. Is this still public comment? It can be. Sure. Okay. Um, so I was uh, concerned about two things. One is the, the seating capacity of the auditorium, and the other is about hours of operation. And um, I'm not sure how, I, I would like the seating capacity, as I read, was limited to 135, and I would like that to be double-checked to see if it couldn't be more, because I believe the building code, the state building code, specifies seven square feet per seated customer, and two square feet for standing customer, in which case you simply divide the seating area by seven and you get the number of occupants legal. And I believe that's determined by the Franklin County Building Commissioner. Uh, at least that's how they did it at the chapel. And, uh, <clears throat> and then there's the hours of operation. Um, I would like to make sure that, you know, the building is if I produce concerts, for instance, on, on the weekend, I'd like to be able to go till 10 o'clock without, you know, stepping on anybody's toes. And so that's a concern I have. I heard some talk about um, a neighbor not being happy and wanting to restrict it to municipal use. And I'm not sure what that's about. So I'm concerned about that because municipal use means uh, functions of the town, town functions, which would mean the historical society has to get out of there, right? Because they're not a municipal use. And so I think that that could be problematic. 
So I just want to know that that's taken care of before I start. But I'm booking concerts already for as soon as the 17th of January. Well, we, 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 we did talk several times about the capacity of the building with even the, the building inspector and the architect. And yeah, there is a seven square feet uh, guideline. There's also a 15 square foot guideline if you're, if you're doing, uh, I want to say banquet or meeting type where you have tables set up. Uh, so we were tossed between the seven and the 15. So you either go 94 or, or 200. And the other, the other consideration we looked at was the number of chairs we have for that room. Uh, yeah, but you can bring in you can, yes, you other can folding chairs. Oh, yeah. more chairs but, but so the uh, building <clears throat> inspector, like I say, that's what we agreed on. I don't know, what is it, 135 or 150? 135, 135. is what? It's what we agreed for for uh, the seating capacity. Now, if people want to stand or whatever, but but you just said it could be 200 or fewer for the table arrangement. Right. So if one didn't want to use the tables, couldn't one use the 200 person occupancy? Well, we'd have to. Go, I think we'd have to go back to the building inspector and see. Uh, and, and that's I, a recommendation coming from them. And okay. and I want to caution us that the building committee they've done great work but they're an advisory board. They're an advisory body to this body. And so the, the select board, unless the building commission, the building inspector has a say, from my eye, we're the organization that would set any seating capacity that is different from code. Well, that's what we're right. One of the, so one code of the says 200 at seven square feet. And if code says 200 at seven square feet, what are we doing? Okay, I just want to. I just, I just, because the, we should be maximizing the use of this building. We shouldn't be minimizing the We put too much blood, sweat, and tears into this building. Okay, but the th thing we've got to remember that the building is is structured differently today than it was before because you don't have as many partitions and rooms on the first floor. So, so we did beef up the, the floor structure on the second floor to accommodate people, and that's, I think, where the building inspector could be coming from because of the way the building is designed and structured and what we did in the first floor, uh, he felt that was the reasonable number. Like I said before, yeah, you, there was more partitions, the, the, the floor was maybe supported better up there than it is today. Oh, so it's not supported as well after all that work? It, it, it is, but... I, we didn't, we I, I, didn't I, I, go extra measures to, to get the full 200 people there, is what I'm saying. Wait, wait. May I comment? May I comment? Yes, yeah. please. Um, it's a hard thing to talk about in the abstract. And what I would recommend is that right now we have one, just about, I think it is 135 folding chairs. Right, set I counted yeah. So, right, because, yes, yeah. and, and they're clean. <laughs> Very. <laughs> Very. So you know, maybe maybe going up there a couple of people and just looking and thinking really practically how many, how many more people could we get in here safely would be a good thing mm -hmm. rather than you know right I just don't want to be yeah sort of just across the board just yeah. this is done I, I want it would be wall it would be wall to wall people if you put 200 up there I mean 200 chairs up there you're you're not having any aisles or any walk no there has to be aisles well. Yeah. If you look the way it's set up now at 135, there isn't much more. Okay, well let's look. Let's let's take a look at this. Let's I mean, I think eventually the building inspector has to make the determination. Yeah, that's right. Really right. I think so, so yeah. well, I think it's worth maybe we'll have another There's discussion one, with him. Yeah. Just from my point of view, 135 isn't that big an increase, and I'm not sure it's worthwhile producing concerts there. You know, I mean. How many do you have now? Close to 100. Close to 100. Okay. So, so I suggest that the question of uh, structural capacity uh, is for an engineer yeah, to determine, course. and even right. the building inspector would respect a licensed engineer who says, given the plans, here's the load-bearing capacity right. of right. the space. Well, my guess is the building the, inspector may have that ability. Yeah. Right, but, but right. that's an engineering decision. Right. Then, the, then there is the uh, capacity for how you pack people in. Uh, and I think the only other factor that you want to be careful about 
is that the lift is a one-person lift, and it is slow. And if you uh, have to deal with emergency uh, access, we need to have a clear plan for uh, where people who need the lift would be staged so that the fire department could come get them because, well, if we lose power, we can't get them out. And if we uh, have power but work slowly, it will take a while, like two to four minutes per well, I have, to believe, I have to believe there's code around that. Yeah, but, so, so, but we, we just need to work out some details. Yeah. And I'm used to buildings having uh, a fire safe staging area where people who can't get down the stairs go to this area, as an assembly area. And the fire department knows that. And the fire department comes uh, to uh, provide lifts if needed uh, for those people. So, so we, we need some details <coughs> before we just say we could take were accessible. And we I, don't think anyone, I don't think anyone's doing that, but okay, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, we need that before we can arbitrarily say, I think we want a 200 or whatever number. I think uh, there's, there's, like I've been trying to say, there's a justification of why we come up with that number. And it was just proposed, it's in the use policy, it's proposed. The building committee hasn't said that that's a definite number, but we're still Well, that's what we're still here. Yeah. I, I saw it was proposed. Right. Proposed, so that did come from the architect. So we'll have to. I talked to the architect. Talk to well, so. yeah. Okay. Other comments? Um, I would just say it, it can be just spelled out that safe capacity and number of chairs available could be spelled out in the final document because they're two different animals. Okay. Um, since we sort of morphed into a conversation with the town hall use policy. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. Since it's next on the agenda. How do you want to do this? Do you want to oh, see I if anybody else has any? Have, 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 has yeah. the document been distributed to the people in the audience? Which one? The town hall use policy? No, yeah. that's for the select board. Not the one Brian proposed, no. Okay. I, I was wondering if anybody was here and wanted to add anything to what has been submitted. Or we can go through what I've put together. I, I think we should, depending on anybody has any other extra comments, but after that, go through your document, Brian, because there's some decisions that we need to make before before we, we can finalize this and, and put out another version for people to comment on, I think. Uh, so I have two comments, if I may. Uh, one is to reinforce the suggestion that several of us made that uh, as a policy to be voted by the select board, uh, it seems that this is remarkably detailed, and it would mean that any amendment would have to come back to the select board. Make more sense, it seems to me, for the select board to set high-level policy and commission the town administrator to deal with all the details of this, rather than every little thing coming back on appeal or amendment to the select board. So operationally, it seems to me, the initial draft was far too complex to be a policy and best divided into high level policy and then let the town administrator work on <coughs> details um, that can be more nimble. Uh, so I just want to reinforce that point. The second point is that our conversation about capacities anticipates the possibility of there being tables in the auditorium. We have no tables in the auditorium. Trucking a bunch of tables up by somebody. We don't have more than four indoor tables, which are down in the uh, meeting room. Trucking tables up for an event that needed tables is going to crush the building, in my view. There's no way to get them up there without wrestling them up the stairs, banging all the walls, uh, and as a maintenance issue, 
it will leave the building shabbier event by event. So I caution that somebody needs to think very carefully about how tables could be gotten to the auditorium before we imagine that the auditorium is open for business with round tables, rectangular tables, or whatever. Uh, it is a nightmare of, of manual labor uh, that is likely to end up butchering the stairwells, the carpet. Uh, and so let's be really careful about that, else we lose the, the good condition of the building in a hurry. Can I ask a question in there? Mm -hmm. um, Neil, is there a place on the second floor where folded tables could be stored? Because that seems like it's a lot. I mean, if you're having an event, I'm thinking of many events, town meeting, you need a table there for the town clerk. Um, often we have to people with tables with town related events. So I can completely see. The, the need for having some tables up there sometimes for for reasonable events. Um, if there were a place to store them up there, then you could just have tables you could get out. But I don't. I have not been there since it was um, renovated. I don't really know. Uh, there, there are there are four six foot tables. Uh, in but those the are downstairs. No, they were they were Wood, wood. No, no, the four six-foot tables, the wooden tables, wooden tables are, are there, but you, that's not suitable for a banquet or, or some sort of dinner. Right. Uh, but for for select board and finance committee uh, in a in a town meeting, uh, that would be adequate tabling. But it's it's just it's just that you you could not have have uh, whatever you you want twelve or twenty dinner tables uh, without trucking them up and we don't have storage capacity for that many folding tables. Uh, okay, yeah, I was thinking of a handful, you know, less, certainly less than 10. <laughs> um, yeah, we have, we have room, we could have four or five more tables that would fit in the storage closet for the auditorium, <clears throat> but we would not have room for a dozen or more. It strikes me that if someone wanted to use the upstairs for an event that would have would, would benefit from round tables. I'm envisioning the Boston Pops with their round tables and you know people eat their cakes and pies. Um, that any organization that wanted to do that would have to hire a company, the, the equivalent of a moving company. Rental that, company. That could, well, but a rental company who really knows how to get these things in and out of the space because I mean, these people can get things in and out of space that you'd think the building was going to be wrecked, and they, it's amazing. But short of that, there need, I, I think that my thought would be that there does need to be some protection of the building, but that shouldn't preclude, if someone has a good case to be made for how they will <coughs> get tables up there short of a bunch of 14 year olds trying to earn a couple bucks running up and down the stairs, um, I, I, I think that should be open. But maybe Neil's point about the, the building use, it, it, it's too specific. I, I don't know, I don't have an answer to that, but yeah. I want the building to be used, otherwise we just went through a huge thing for nothing. But I think, may I, may yeah. I, um, uh, I agree with what you just said. Um, I, I also think I think I put this in my lengthy comments, <laughs> that um, it would serve the town well to do some staging in terms of the types of events we test over, you know, sort of have a six month period where we're, we're not launching into that kind of untested, you know, but we're doing things that we know that we know how to do so that we figure out what haven't we anticipated, you know, what's, what are obstacles that we, we just didn't think of, but test that with kind of smaller scale events that aren't high risk, <laughs> you know? Um, and certainly, I would recommend um, restricting use in the, in the near term, and I'm not talking about years and years, but the near term, where somebody um, in the town is clearly the sponsor for that event. The draft use policy has a kind of, um, catch-all category of other, and by implication other, 
means not a town event and not an event sponsored by someone in the town. Um, and that, I think, we probably ought to push off a little bit till we've tried a number of different kinds of events where, where we know the players. Um, and again, if because there are lots of organizations in the Valley that are looking for good venues, and once we, when we have the first one from outside do something in the town hall, we want to make sure it goes right, because word gets it around. You know, this will either be a good place for people to choose or not a good place. Um, uh, I'd say two things. Uh, what's, a, what's, I guess, different now in the building, the, the, all the walls and the stairway are painted. Before, they were natural or rustic or unpainted, so if you scuffed them or something, you would never see it. Uh, now it's painted. If you touch it with anything, you're, you're going to have a mark there. Uh, the other thing is, is the more people we have, more capacity there, we're going to need probably more parking. And, you know, that people keep saying, well, people will find parking. If there's an event there, they will find parking somewhere on the street. Well, yes, that's, that's true. Uh, I don't remember lately having anything of 200 people there, and I don't know the capacity next door, what their facility is, whether it's 200 or even probably less than that. Uh, that could be something like you're saying, we need to gradually get into that to see how, <clears throat> how that would be handled and what during what time of year. This time of year, it's no problem. You can park anywhere, I guess, in the wintertime with snow banks and whatever. It may be an issue, I don't know. Dan? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I agree with what's being said here. Um, I'm gonna take it a step further. I, I'm very familiar with event space use and the first thing I'm going to recommend, specifically upstairs, the downstairs is a little issue. Uh, the first thing I'm going to recommend is that some town representative opens the building and closes the building uh, so that we know that the toilet's not overflowing and the stove's not left on and the ice sculpture's not melting down through the upstairs floor. Uh, very typical of, of an event space. You mean like the ice sculpture for the smoked salmon and stuff? Exactly. Okay. Now, secondly, uh, the other thing that's a huge issue is, let's say it's uh, wedding receptions, typically younger people. They all of a sudden it becomes tailgating. Everybody sets up their bars in, the, in their trunk. So in the event spaces I'm used to, a specific person's hired to monitor the outside so that it's not a liquor party on the outside that's then brought out to the inside. So I think we're fooling ourselves not to think that we need to hire somebody for our minimum that controls the key and controls the building. I know uh, Mr. Abrams is, is helping out, but I don't think he's interested in taking over a, a monitoring situation. But I think the town's going to need it. We put a million and a half into a building to give somebody a key, say, have fun and drop the key off in our lockbox when you're done. That's, that's absurd. I, I don't see that as any kind of practical event. That's one of our decisions we need to make is whether we allow alcohol or not. And maybe that's... <coughs> but even if you don't, I'm telling you right now, it's, the alcohol's outside in the trunks. Because yeah. most of the people come into a wedding with the young people, we get married, <coughs> they're not even legal to yeah. drink. So it's all happening outside. So now you got a whole other issue Especially because we're going to be parking up and down Main Street. Yeah. Uh, it's just something to think about. I'm not too worried about Watermelon Wednesday because Paul's in charge. Yeah. But if somebody from any other surrounding towns in charge, and they don't pay attention, you know, we we just we got a million and a half dollars sitting there. And I I know we want to use it, but I think we need to use it right. And I, what I'm seeing so far, I don't think we're we're planning that. I want to I want to second Neil's suggestion about the policy uh, separation just to make it more doable and more realistic. I also want to say that uh, um, what was I going to say? Seeing a little bit. Yeah. Well, I'm feeling a little out of it. Um, oh yeah. 
So anybody who uses the space would have to sign, I think it's in the policy, they have to sign some sort of contract with the town saying <clears throat> the space will be returned in the condition it was found. And so if there's any damage, the user would have to pay for it. Right. It's remediation. Security deposits. Yeah, yeah for something like that. Sure. Yeah. And there's also um, wording about insurance that the town should should ask people to take out for certain types of events, right. such as a wedding. Um, regarding the issue of illegal drinking outside the building, though, that we do have a police force that could be um, informed when there are events to make sure that that sort of thing is not going on. Because there is a container law that should right. right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, Ruth Leahy from the Grange, and um, if by chance that there is tailgating, which um, <clears throat> uh, tailgate drinking, those people that are renting should pay for the police department, not the town. That should be included. My father was a policeman and broke up a lot of problems. That's, I think they should pay for it if they have a problem. We should be reimbursed. Okay. Other comments? Okay. Um, oh, can, can I add? Can yeah. I add? I just want to jump on Dan's comment for a second about, about having a, a responsible person there. And uh, is there a certain threshold as to a, a number of uh, an event under that, or we would be comfortable without having somebody there, but events of a certain size would make sense to have to have a monitor or what, how, however, whatever we want to call that. Um, because you know, I don't think we would need one for, we wouldn't need a monitor for the Grange meeting, but we need a monitor for when. Well, it gets subjective and it gets very gray. It could get very gray area you ask. Yeah. Which well, is I, what? Actually, I have an idea about that, which, and I, this gives me an opportunity to say, please let us not be scheduling weddings in the building till we really, really, really know what we're doing. <laughs> but, um, but, um, it seems to me that remember that in the over the many years when we were arguing about this building that we took a couple of surveys and heard from a lot of organizations in town that they wanted meeting space. These weren't about wild parties. This was about, you know, Fran and Nancy's aging in place group and Margaret saying CISA needs another meeting place. You know, these were mostly nonprofit um, related activities. One solution um, for that kind of organism, that kind of activity, smallish scale, whatever we mean by that, and I agree, get to decide, would be to have a training program so that, you know, before Amy gives a key to someone, someone from that organization has gone through a little bit of an orientation about, you know, with. Probably Neil. Yeah, yeah. Volunteer. Yeah. He's a good teacher. <laughs> <laughs> no, tough. No. About what the responsibility is and signing off on something. I mean, it, again, this isn't for those other activities which raise, but for town sponsored activities, I think you can achieve some middle ground between adding a lot of expense and having, you know, a complete laissez faire. There's, mm -hmm. some, there's, a, there's a middle ground there. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm just worried about the, the, the gray area. Right, you, you know, have to it, define it, yeah. What happens if, I'm gonna pick on the Grinch because the Grinch is here, because I couldn't think of anything that's more creative than the Grinch. What happens if the Grinch decides, you know what, we're gonna have our Christmas party there this year. Uh -oh. And there's gonna, we're, we're gonna, uh, this is a hypothetical. All right, we're not going to pick up the range anymore. It's we're going to pick up something else. Something. The Snowmobile Club. The VFW. I, you know, we're going to have our Christmas party there this year, and we're going to, you know, we're going to bring in a case, a couple cases of beer, and you know, it's a gray area. All of a sudden, an organization that we would welcome to use the space now, people are saying, hmm, 
So that's my point about we have to give this some serious discussion. And fortunately, no one's banging down the doors to use it for this kind of purpose yet anyway. But, but this isn't just a conversation that's going to happen in a 24-hour period of time because it, it's, it is so unbelievably subjective. And I'm not comfortable. Well, 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 I don't say I agree no one's banging down the door, but last week, just because I don't know why, three different people in town sent me notes to say, this is great, Who do I, how do I sign up? You know, my organization wants to do this, my organization, three to, so, right. so that's not banging down the door, but that's, I'm not the only person. There is gonna be, I, I understand yeah. that, there but is interesting. Yeah. There's, there's, but and they're calling Brian. I said it's, too. It's yeah. got to be, it's got to be managed. It's got to be thoughtful. It can't be just knee jerk. So one, one way to do it is like when I was on the board, we used to have people wanting to have events at Hurley. Right? Still do. Yeah. And still do. And what happened? They had to appeal to the select board, and the select board had to give them the okay. So why not have the same process for, well, you want a policy so you can. So you don't have to interview everybody who's going to have a small event there. But you know, for, for bigger events, or certainly if they want to have alcohol, you all should be the deciders, right, of whether or not this merits approval. Yeah, that's, that's it is subjective. Sorry. But you can't just say 30 people or more have to do something. That's, a, that's very arbitrary. We also can't discriminate on age and all that right. kind of stuff. I don't, so. I, I think, you know, looking back at why, why, why do, do we remodel the town hall? Why did we do it? Was it to make a venue for all these, anybody to come and use? Or was it because the building needed to be renovated? And my first reaction is the building need to be renovated, regardless of what we did. What, or who was using it, the building need to be renovated and it would be used for town departments, functions, and whatever. That was our, to me, that was our primary goal in doing it. And now, if it's, it's great if, if we got other people wanting to use it, uh, but the, the concern is how do we manage that? And who is gonna manage that? I mean, you're looking at, at staff here that's uh, already have enough on their plate to do without being a facility manager or whatever you want to call it, or event organizer. Well, this is where uh, I think we go back to Donna's idea of we have a test period, uh, and we and we, this right. is going to be an evolutionary product, right. I'm sure. Of course it is. Right. And it can go both ways over time. Yeah. But I, I'm going to, and I don't want to belabor this too much, but I, I'm actually going to question, Fred, your, your feeling that this was done because the building simply needed to be renovated. Most people would say renovated if there was a purpose. And if there was no purpose, not just renovate the thing because it needed to be a fixer-upper. But also, and Donna can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the largest grant we ever applied for to help rehabilitate this building was a cultural facility grant. So it wasn't just a town yes. office supplemental meeting space it was it was a planned facility to make waitley a fun cool sexy place to live did we get that grant but, no, but, uh, no, we didn't. Okay. But and, 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 and by the way, Dan, yeah, it was the largest. One of the it's criticisms the was that it was too <laughs> officey. Well, oh. and, and the real and the real criticism was that we had no business plan, which we are now proving. And we, <laughs> right, <laughs> no. right. And my point. I, I think Brian and I knew at the point that that point that we were kind of making up a couple of things before we got to that. Yeah. Question. Well, that's a grant writing in general, as you know. So anyway. I, I think we need, I'm going to suggest that we have some ad hoc group get together and and really, we haven't thought this thing through. We just have it. I, I, I just add one comment to what, what you're saying. It explained it, it was, it was renovated so we could use the building, not just to renovate and sit there. It wasn't being used because there was no handicapped accessibility, the bathrooms <coughs> weren't acceptable, and there was no heat upstairs. Without that, regardless of who wanted to use it, it wasn't allowable because of that. 
So even if you didn't have any use, at least that part needed to be done to preserve the building and, and make it available. Okay. So I, I know, you know, Brian to me has done a good job here of, of highlighting the, the concerns that, that people have raised so far. Uh, and it's gonna come back to, if we have another group of people look at it, a summary come back to the board to decide do we agree with all this or not. Uh, Brian has done some of that already. I, I don't know, maybe I should ask Brian, do, do you think we need more input on this to make decisions on how we want to proceed? Well, <clears throat> let me summarize my thoughts on the, uh, on the public comments that were received. They ran, I mean, it was a wide range of of comments. Some of the comments were some people wanted X and some people didn't want X and well, I'll just use one of them. Some people thought the the hours of operation were, were, were not late enough and some people thought they were too late and um, for other things some people had were concerned that alcohol was served. Some people were okay with alcohol being served. Um, so it's it, it, I agree that it's subjective. Um, you know, some people have said the, the the fees were too low, and it was going to just become this low cost party venue. And other people thought the fees were right. And other people thought that the um, that the fees were too high and was going to discourage use. Um, so it's it, there's there's not there's not any right answer, I guess. Um, and at some point. I think it's going to fall to the board to say this is what we're this is what we're going to start with, and we'll we'll you know we'll see how it goes and and we'll change it as our experiences teach us. Well, I agree with that. It's going to be an iterative um, process, but I, I I just don't think that we I I don't think we're I I would not recommend that the board adopt this as is. Um, I wouldn't mind. I wasn't going to vote for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. But, 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 but I don't want Neither the board I. to be the deliberator of this because that means we have to do it here. And well, it's I, supposed I, to be for open meeting law, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. No, but you could have, no, my point is you could have another go at the, 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 the policy and then bring it back here. Well, that's what Ryan is proposing with his comments here. I'll, I'll propose it. I'll take another crack at it. I mean, the, I guess my point with, with if we had some ad hoc committee, we're going to have people who say, you know, they're going to have diametrically opposed viewpoints on certain issues. But if stakeholders aren't involved, I, I, let, let's say if the Grange isn't involved and if Paul's not involved, because he obviously has has, has an interest in, in what this policy use looks like. If you don't have stakeholders involved, you're losing a critical element of information. That, And if you make a decision without that input, it, it's a flawed process. They, they've already made comments on the on the policy. All the people in this room, plus the neighbors, immediate neighbors, and well, not maybe not all immediate, but neighbors neighbors surrounding the town hall have made comments. They're the ones most affected, I guess you could say, or maybe most interested. Yeah, but all of our uh, tax dollars paid for it. And, and it was on the it was on the website. Uh, several times it was in a newspaper that here's our policy we're being we're, we're developing so people have had plenty of opportunity to comment uh, if we go with another version that, that Brian proposes uh, you know we can still advertise it like we have it's it's out there for people to comment on it I, I guess I, I just don't see uh, like Brian is alluding to another another committee that you're gonna have uh, different viewpoints and, and you got the different viewpoints already and Brian has summarized, done a good job in summarizing that already. Yeah, yeah so, but I, can I address some of that? Yeah. Um, I, I like the idea that a small group working with Brian uh, might come up with a, a better policy that the support could uh, look at. Um, that it seems to me that you know, it's, a, it's a more nimble structure than a group like us who are required to do everything in, in open meeting. You know, you can't, um, we, we, there's a limit to 
what we can get done. So if um, you know various stakeholders or really anybody in the town is interested um, could do that, I'd be happy to phone into those meetings as sort of a select board's rep. Unless Fred, you think you'd uh, rather do that because I know you've been much more involved. But if, if one of us were doing that with the other stakeholders, then I think we'd come up with something probably that's uh, more practical. And I thought I'd also chime in on just from reading through the, the comments, um, especially from the neighbors, um, it seems like the, the worry is that there's, you know, it's going to be seven nights a week parties for, you know, with all kinds of people from out of town parking on their yard. Um, we, I think we really have to address that yeah. in, the, in the policy somewhere that this is not our intention to be making a, you know, a destination party stop. Um, that I think we really want our local Grange. As long as the Grange is there, Ruth, Ruth, you guys gonna promise not to do much tailgating? All right? <laughs> We're not allowed to have alcohol anyway. <laughs> really? That's why the Grange. In the building, in the middle. <laughs> Question. Yeah, that's why the building is still. You need to amend that bylaw. Okay. Right. So it's the right. range and the historical society keep their tailgating to a minimum there. Um, then yeah, I think uh, uh, that was obviously a, a joke, but um, you know I, I think there, there's a solution here. I, I, I liked what um, Donna had said about um, staging in the sense that hey, we're starting out now. Um, Here's all these municipal groups. You guys are fine. Schedule meetings. You don't need insurance, uh, but you do need to work with someone to get a key, and you do need to uh, understand a bit about the building before your group can start meeting there regularly. You know, um, and then kind of work your way up from there. I know all along that concerts were something that we had thought of for that upstairs room. Um, well, I don't know how to stage that in. But that seems like something where we've certainly got somebody who's willing to work with the town to make sure that the building is taken care of and that that sort of thing can, can happen routinely. But it doesn't have to happen for just anybody who comes along. I like the idea of for certain events having a, oh, one of the, the when, they, when we do things at the Universal uh, Unitarian Church in, in Worcester, um, they, they have oh, it's a word that sounds like it's from the Hobbit or something, like a prefect or, a, or, or something like that. They have someone who, who you have to pay for to be at your event um, if, if you're not um, already associated with that church. Um, that's a very reasonable thing for a big event. So maybe uh, in, you know, some events, um, uh, the ones that I've been to, my friend who happens to be a member of that church is the uh, prefect, I can't remember the right word, um, the, for, for Watermelon Wednesdays. We probably pretty much know who's going to be that person for Watermelon Wednesdays. Um, I, I think this is all doable, but it might not be doable in open meeting uh, to work out the nitty gritty details and the, the timeline. I'm fine with putting restrictions on what can happen during the first six months, the first year, and then reassessing after a year, I'm fine with saying no events with alcohol for the first year. You know, just to, that's what we're working out the case. Or uh, no events with outside caterers. Um, oh, yeah, no banquets. We don't have tables for it, and we don't want you tracking your tables up and down our staircase with your 14 year old movers. You know, that it, I think it's okay to. To kind of phase those sorts of things in as things arise, and as we come up with other thing, policies, like, hey, who could be the, uh, you know, the proctor or the steward for uh, any group that's going to be used in the place? But I, I, I do think a small group might be able to work this out a little bit better. I agree, and, and, and let's keep in mind also that the litmus test cannot just be being a Waitley resident, because. Having dealt with Hurley for several years now, the bathrooms are continuously unlo left unlocked. It, 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 there are a number of flaws with that, and it's not simply out of towners who don't take yeah, take take care of these things. And so, let, let's remove the halo from our town a little bit. Um, 
So I, I think some kind of a stakeholder, people who, are, who have plans to use it so they can chime in. And maybe you should reach out to those individuals. And, and Neil should be on that group. And I think Paul, you should be. And then the Green should be. You know, but, but people who, who say, I want to use this, and here are my concerns. Because if those concerns aren't voiced, what are we doing? Yeah. So, so I have uh, two suggestions. One is, I think there's a compromise between consulting and forming a committee. Uh, and that is, uh, I think, if Brian remains the actor, uh, charged to consult with uh, known interested parties and reporting on what he learns, uh, I don't think you want to get into a committee with divergent opinions, trying to take votes to see whether it's a vote of three to two or four to three. Oh, that, just that, that, right, right. Yeah. So it's, that, I, I think you want advice. Yeah. You want input to Brian. Brian summarizes it so you know what it is. And the charge is consult. So redraft it, uh, get comments again from uh, key players to see how close this comes to meeting their needs or if there's still objections, <laughs> and report what those concerns are uh, when the uh, proposal from the town administrator comes back. I, I think that's better than forming a committee because then somebody who wasn't on the committee wants to know why some were on and some were off. And, uh, so I wouldn't go to the formal structure. So that's suggestion number one. Uh, suggestion number two is we have town groups that start with town committees. Uh, and maybe there are a few other town groups like the Grange uh, and Whateley's Aging in Place group. Uh, there, there are some groups that have been using other spaces responsibly, including this building uh, or the Congregational Church. Uh, right, so, so, so there are some groups that maybe in a reasonable discretionary way, you could go ahead and say um, to Brian, use your best judgment for um, the, the current regulars uh, who use town spaces or have recently used town spaces, and we can go ahead and get started with a very modest set of operating principles. Here's how you check out a key and so forth and get started if we have to wait so you voted a complete policy, uh, and then you got to deal with who gets a waiver on the insurance and, and so forth. Uh, it, it's got to be January before you get anybody in the building, and you've got groups that would like to have s some modest meetings in the building. It seems to me sensible to go ahead and authorize Brian to allow usage where he has no doubts. And where he has doubts, he can say, I'm not ready yet, I need a policy, we're working on it. But where he has no doubts, that he could go ahead and uh, issue keys and get them back promptly and arrange for uh, inspection to be sure that things were left in good order. Uh, but let's go ahead and get the building. I, I, was assuming that, I was assuming that committees would be able to use the building like any other town building right away. And maybe I'm wrong about that, but it's a town building if who cares what committee wants to use it because they don't have the meeting space somewhere else. Why? You're talking municipal boards and committees. That's what you mean by municipal committee. Right? Yes. Yes. As a start. They so are. That and and, and include the Grange in that, even though they're not a municipal. You got the Grange, you got the Historical Society. VFW if they want to come back to town hall. Uh, you, you've got some other groups that are not municipal. Uh, officially. Yeah, I, I, I agree with your two points you're making, Neil, about the first one, Brian, coordinating and, and getting more input on the revised version. And your second comment, today if somebody, VFW wants to meet there next week, we know who VFW is or Snowmobile Club, and Brian feels comfortable with that, let him use the building until we develop a formal use policy. I mean, you're going to monitor what they're doing. It's not like are they are now. So. I, I know I, uh, I know I chuckled a little bit when you offered Neil to do the training orientation, but I think that's, 
I think that may be an important thing that we could do. We could have these groups before before we give you a key. You need to go and learn more about the building and you go through this process. And I think we can sort of control acts. We can control who's going to use the building in the in, the, in this interim period that way okay. yeah. as well. Um, okay, so I. I I'd like to recommend that Brian uh, revise the, the, the draft that's, that's out now for comment and, and put another version out for comment and get responses, input back from other people and then come back to the board. I, I would only amend that, that I, I think that Brian should, and maybe he already did this, but he should overtly think about who the natural stakeholders might be and reach out to them rather than waiting for someone because we all know that people are busy and oh yeah we put the notice of meeting notice out there or the year and and no no one notices so if we can calculate who's going to use this building and if we guess wrong let's over guess so quickly who would it be that that, well, that hasn't been involved at this point well we do have a list of people who said they want to use the right. building we have a those survey who responded to two surveys that's the that's well right but but is there anybody part. else is my question. Well, I don't know, but we haven't well, been in touch with all of them. But, but, <laughs> but, 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 but Brian has a pretty good sense of who might be on that list. Well, yeah, we know. The ones that I think I yeah. think are, I, I've heard from, and I, I definitely haven't compared it to that list. I, I feel like that list is lengthier than it's got, what it's, I have in my mind. It's, it's got 18 or, uh, well, 18 or 20 entities. Yeah. People that use this building in the library, too. Like the other well, and you also have might, yeah. somebody involved with the library um, said to me, uh, whatever, whatever day we were all together, Sunday came up and said really happily, which I thought this was great, we're going to have our um, crafts fair up in the auditorium in December. I actually think that's a great idea if they will need tables <laughs> of some sort, you know, but uh, that, I, I, my, I think that's an example of the kind of thing where once someone has seen the space, possibilities come to mind. Okay. All right, Brian, you have your marching orders then. Okay. I'm going to keep this okay. moving. moving. Um, municipal aggregation plan. Public comment. It's been on the website. What's my agenda? Yeah, I just, wanted to, I just wanted to highlight that what you just said. Are we on the website already? Yes. Okay. Hey, bye Joyce. Uh, give Matt, Matt my regrets about the Nobel Prize this year. We're in Sweden too. It would have been perfect. <laughs> it, it's fun being in Sweden during Nobel Prize week. Okay. Uh, yeah. um, so we are looking for public comment. Is, and is it, where on the website is the... It's on the, it'll come up on the front page. It front says, page above the Whitley officials have released municipal aggregation plan. And again, very quickly, this would, very briefly, this would set the default supplier for those residents who have not selected a competitive supplier of electricity. Assuming that the select board enter into an agreement with whoever the competitive supplier is. Right. Call me with questions, I guess is the best way to put it, but. Um, okay. I, I have one question on the, and maybe Joyce can explain, somebody can explain this to the table there to give an example of the monthly bill. Uh, it showed two figures. I don't know, where is the, the aggregation impact on this monthly bill? I, I don't, I, I can see that. Page 12, I guess, of the. Generation services charge. Supplier okay, services. So That's, uh, okay, that would that would be from, from, the, from this aggregation it would be the, the sixty dollars and you still would have the seventy six ninety four as re a regular part of your bill that's, delivery that's, charge. that's, that's my delivery charge because they're all, all bills were already two that they're divided this way this ten this uh ten cents and some change here for the one hour that's what would change ideally it would be lower right or greener as we have decided and, and who controls the other the items above that Ever source. Ever source. Yep. Yep. We don't get to play with those. Right. So far, it's under control. Okay, that exactly. That wasn't sure. But okay. Yeah. yeah. Nothing changes except for your, except for right, except for the generation piece. Okay. Right. 
Okay. So, so um, we encourage everyone to read this with a fine tooth comb if they're so inclined because it is possible that the town will enter into an agreement with Colonial Power at a yet to be determined date. Um, and this is an opt out program. It is not an opt in program. So the town, so if you, unless you opt out, if the, if the town chooses to enter into a, an agreement with Colonial Power. Well, a competitive supplier. A, a competitive, or any, or a competitive supplier, I'm sorry. Yes, yep. Colonial, you're right. Um, then it will happen on behalf of everyone unless someone says do not have it happen on behalf of me and then you will go back to the, de the default supplier that you currently have. But the goal... And there's no, there's no notification of all so no. you'll be notified and given the chance to opt out and so on. Yeah. And, but the goal of the town is to either realize a lower generation rate or a cleaner generation rate at no additional cost than the current mix provides. And, and how often can the rates change or will they change? How often will they change? Are they fixed for that generation rate for a six month period or? It's either six or a year. I Joyce, do you remember? It depends on the contract that you sign. That's true. I think it yeah. depends on what, yeah. the, uh, what the bidders come in with. Yeah, but typically it's six or 12 months. Oh, typically. so there is, okay, that guarantee for that time period, yeah. okay. But again, it, it, it is contingent upon place and time. That's right, right. Okay. All right, um, so the website, Whaley.org, and it is clearly visible. Yeah. And Please get comments back to us before the next select board meeting because that's when the board will be asked. Which is the 24th this month. 24th. Same date as the town meeting. That's okay. the town meeting. Okay. All right. Highway garage roofing. How about C? Did you didn't go through C, did you? Oh, Gen I'm sorry. Generation installation. I, I apologize. Um, I just wanted to make sure that, so I, um, we have the generator and we have the quote from Mark Bustier to, um, for the, um, the electrical installation, so we have the labor and materials costs, um, and it's well within the, the funds that we've appropriated. I just want to make sure that the board's okay with us moving forward with Mark and getting this installed. Uh, Keith had a Keith met with Bob Lesko to look at locations as to where the generator might be installed, and they were thinking um, if you're standing between the, the shed that's behind the school, if you're standing between the school and the shed. It's to the left of the shed, immediately to the left of the shed, towards the rear of the shed, um, as the as the uh, the best place for that generator to be installed. It's out in the open. It's not in any enclosure. No, I mean it's a self-contained self generator. But and there's talk about maybe putting up one um, one panel of fencing there. But it provides for the, the straightest shot for the electrical conduit, um, and really the gener we, we can program the generator test on the weekends when nobody's at the school and you know our hope is 99.9% .9 of the time that generator is never used because if it's being used then if it's We're being used for a long period emergency. of time we have bigger issues than yeah yeah than that so okay that's fine I'm okay with that we don't need to vote do we I just want to make sure we're yeah okay, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Right. it sounds like it puts it close to the neighbor's house did you see the site? I don't think there are any houses back there. No, there are no houses back there. So there's no house to the... It's all field. So there's, 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 the one, there's one on the, on the north side. There's, yeah. Yeah, but that's really close to the road. It's nowhere near where the school building is. Yeah. No, no, no. No, it's... it's he's way out by the ground. He's, he's in the butter to the school. I just make sure we're not... I'll take a look. Oh. not blowing exhaust in his shot. We should have I say thank you for this excuse for me to pull up the assessor's maps on my computer. Right. She really does enjoy it. doing that. Uh, yes. uh, uh, but it's a fair it. point. The, 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 the abutter should be notified about what. That's it's a fair point. going to crank once a week. Yep. Okay, what's the map show? I'm pulling it up. Come on, come on. And is this open? Right, it's not like I'm right there next oh, to you. Oh, okay, right. okay, I forget, you're long distance, okay. It's good. Right, so I'm it's got a, a uh, It's got a muffler, and it would it would be positioned so it would go back away from the school. 
Again, this should this should not be running. Right. No. Um, and if it is running for long, and the periods test of time, only has to be a test for a short period of time. Yeah, they usually I'm not sure exactly things. how it is, but yeah. And this is fueled with diesel or propane? Diesel. Diesel. Okay. Joyce. Yes, I'm what? looking at it, and what I'm seeing on the assumptions map. Okay, there's the elementary school. Well, if it's behind the elementary school, then it's almost like the school building is in between it, between the generator and the nearest house. Now, there's a structure at 361 that might be a farm structure. It's uh, Sanderson. Um, so it looks like it's long and skinny. Looks like a barn. So there's a barn nearby. That could be the one that had the fire. That might have be gone. Yeah, that may be gone. gone. Right. Is that to the is that to the south, south. of the school? The barn. I said it's to the south. Yeah, that south barn. That, that barn is history. Met its maker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then there's another thing out in that field there. Um, yeah, to the west. There's see, but there that's kind of you know that's to the west. far away. That's and really far. The, away. Yeah. The, yeah. The home is definitely. Um, much closer along Plain Road. Um, but the home's to the north, right? It's to the north, right. It's too much north side. Yeah, yeah. That, they should yeah. be notified, but I don't see this as, a, as an issue because it's also close right. to the road. No, but right, that little hut is actually on there. So, it, yeah, the place where you're talking about doesn't seem to be adjacent to the property line with the house, but it is adjacent to property lines with uh, the two farms there. Okay, let's notify the, that property owner. Um, now, highway garage roofing. High garage roofing. So, uh, we went out for quotes to do the highway garage. That's why. Didn't they just get a new roof up you know, recently? No. No. It seems like we keep re roofing that place. No, never. Well, it needs to be a new building at some point. <laughs> You're thinking of the. Please but we'll put the old roof, Joyce, for you. We'll put the old roof on the new building when that happens. Okay. <laughs> we'll rebuild the walls. Just jack it up. So we went out my luck, someone's going to think I was serious, by the way. Um, so we I, got, I must be thinking of the fire station or something. Yeah. Or the um, elementary school. Yeah. That's right. So we got quotes for the. Uh, we got yeah. quotes to do the work. And. Um, the lowest quote that we received uh, was a bit confusing and in my mind it's incomplete. We asked for a total price to do the roof and then a price per linear square foot to replace the, the trim board. Um, and then the references for the, for the low bidder, there really weren't any. Um, they referenced their suppliers as, as the references. They didn't provide any references. Um, so I talked with Keith about this and um, our feeling is that we should go with uh, the next bidder, um, which is uh, JJS Universal Universal Construction, um, for eighteen thousand dollars for the for the total price for the roof, and then twelve dollars per linear foot um, to replace the faster board. We checked references that that they provided, and they all uh, came back as having done good work, and the references were all municipal entities as well. So there's information on this that's not complete, clearly. Yeah. Because total price per foot installed is seven dollars and fifty cents for a total price of twenty-six thousand five hundred dollars. No, and it's two separate items, Jonathan. The total price. Well. I'm no. Sorry, I, I, total price is just the roof itself, and then the fascia right. board is under. Okay, that's not what it says here. That's why I said what's what I'm looking at is not complete description. Well, right. That's so. So the total price in, in the fourth column from left to right yeah. includes Two, three, the fifth column. No, no, it's because we don't know plus. how many, once they start tearing off the drip edge and the gutters, they're not gonna know how, how many linear feet are deteriorated that need to be ripped off. So what you do is you get a price per, per a foot, linear foot installed. So it's 18,000 plus whatever else, the fascia needs to be done. And we're sure that 18,000 or 19,000, and the 18,000 plus 12 dollars per square foot linear. is gonna be cheap, linear square, whatever, 
is going to be less expensive than 26.5 plus 750 per linear. We're, we know that based I, upon I the so. size of the room. I have that thought to Keith about that. He depend, yeah, based on his knowledge of what he believes that needs to be repaired, yes. Okay. I, I, I don't have a problem with it. Going to 18,000, I guess one concern I have, and I don't know what he's replacing on, on the fascia, only what's rotted or, or damaged. And then you then you've got to uh, paint it, keep it painted. Uh, I, I don't know the extent of how much of that needs to be replaced. Uh, if it's a lot, maybe we should consider going with either aluminum or vinyl, and it's done. When the gutter people do it, they they put that up there, and it's done forever. Uh, otherwise, if you're just patching here and there, he's going to have to paint it every ten years or whatever. I guess I I would go back to Keith and ask. How much of that, and if he's considered a other alternative for replacing all of it? I mean, you don't even have to take it down to to put in aluminum or vinyl. You just cover what's there. Yeah, but you can get to problems if you just cover it um, because there's still wood underneath, and water can still get in there and kind of rot the thing that you just covered with with aluminum or vinyl. Well, but if, but if you get the the uh, the soffits that's vented, then you don't have the problem with moisture in there. Plus, it's it's open on a roof. It's open on a roof inside, Joyce. So I don't see the moisture problem if you cover it. Well, how did the moisture get there to uh, deteriorate the wood that's there? I mean, there is there is moisture down in that area, and that's the problem. Well, it could have come from right? the gutters, could have from the roof and the gutters. If the gutters are too high, too mm -hmm. low, the drip edge wasn't on properly, or it, it just wasn't painted in years and just rotted. So yeah, there's all kinds of conditions. Yeah, no, no, I just went through this with my own house. Yeah, but it's and, a, and good contractors really told me to, you know, the, the, the gutter salesmen really want to just cover everything up so it'll look nice, but then you just won't be able to see the rotting on the inside. I'm just saying to be careful on that. I'm willing to yeah. put that in Keith's um, lap. Um, I, I don't know the building that well. But they, you know, if, if, if water's there, yeah. you know, it can it can get into places and hide. And it's not necessarily our job to figure out which particular technique is going to be better for that structure. Well, I, I think that I heard that Keith and Brian both feel like the JJ S mm. Universal Construction right. is the bid to go with. So I will make a motion to award the bid to JJ S. Um, Universal uh, construction. All those in favor? Fred? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Me? Aye. All right, special town meeting. Warren articles. Are we ready? Ready to go through these? Yeah. And then we have a bonus one that was added today. <clears throat> Everybody has a sheet? Yep. So this was this is proposed for October twenty fourth, um, twenty eighteen at seven o'clock in the evening. Article one, um, transfer the sum of six hundred fifty five dollars and seventy nine cents. Um, that is of, of unpaid bills of a prior fiscal year. I think what happened here was at the end of the year there was an error in payroll and six hundred fifty five dollars and seventy nine cents did not get. Um, um, did not get paid to uh, dues for the Whitley Firefighters Association that should have gotten paid. Um, so, that, as I understand, as Linda explains it to me, there was a payroll mistake and that money is owed. Okay. Um, Want to do these all at once? Yeah. Okay. Article 2 is transfer the sum of $75.70 to pay unpaid bills of a prior fiscal year. That is unpaid um, or unreimbursed petty cash receipts from the library from fiscal year 17, I believe. Um, for some reason, when there was a transition in directors, those never got cashed out. So we're trying to clean that up. Brian, do these Warren articles, the way they're stated, is that sufficient? Or you're explaining what they're for. That's not clear here. Is that I have to explain what, what they're for? No. 
not to pay unpaid bills of a prior fiscal year. Um, I could I could add it in there. If how we, how would people know or we know well, what's the last? And if well, I know, but later on it's it's history in a book. And yeah. Yeah. Um, we could add something there. Yeah, and for, for that, I mean, if you're not going to add something there, but why have two articles? Yeah, why or or how many right. you have? You could combine them. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. We can do that. All right, good idea. Um, Article 3, transfer the sum of $5,100 to pay crude benefits of a, well, retired town employee. That's what we owe Mary Ellen for um, uh -huh. sick leave, vacation, comp time, and uh, those, that's what it amounts to. And that's, that's an okay. amount that we owe. Right. Okay. Um, Article 4, um, see if the town will... Um, Transfer the sum of twenty-four thousand dollars to pay for the archiving of town records and implementation of a comprehensive records management system. Um, is, this is this new information from? This seems like a big number to not do it to not take it up at regular town meeting. It wasn't available then, was it? Yeah, well, but but now we're um, seven months away from town meeting. Yeah, I mean, the number? 24, 24,000. And, and I just, we know how many people are going to show up. And I'm not saying it would not pass, but we know that we'll get anywhere from a dozen to two dozen people at this special town meeting based upon historical yeah. realities. And, and unless this is an imminent thing where crisis is going to prevail time after time, I don't understand why this is. Um, it, I mean, nothing's going to, it, it, it's, nothing terrible is going to happen if, it, if it's not on this warrant. Um, it's going to delay the, it's going to delay, or continue delay to delay the, the build out of, of, of the offices. Um, Why? Because we need to get all of our records, which are spread out over that warehouse, spread out over this backspace here. We need to get those organized and we need to get those uh, the ones that belong in the vault need to go in the vault. Um, and part of part of this money is for shelving that will go in the vault. So those records will be able to be moved in there. Um, and part of it's for labor of, of, of going through and inventorying the records. And all of that really needs to take place before we start permanently putting records into the vault. Um, uh, I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that uh, without bringing someone in who knows about retention schedules and municipal records, this will take, I, I mean, we've tried, we've tried, Linda's tried to, to, to yeah. spend a couple yeah. hours here and there, and you just can't find the time. Right. I'm not it, debating so. the need. I, I'm, I'm just saying that, that it's a big number for a special town meeting. How about if he breaks it up? Labor. You had three different things you just mentioned there. Three. But three it's the same eights. same company or same group would be doing it, I think. I don't know. Maybe three A's. Yeah. I say do it. We're, we're already a year behind. Yeah, I, know, I know. I'm 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 just voicing the reality of. I hear you. I hear you. But it's oh. really in the big picture. It's it's not that big. I mean, we approved the the generators. Uh, well, that was a um, town meeting. Well, that was the extra that was funds. Many and, years ago. Uh, I, yeah. Eighteen thousand for keys for the for the, the for the town garage. I mean, it's just. Yeah, I'm less worried about the size. I, I yeah. think we're worried about delaying the the work because I know yeah. we've oh we've been talking about this since oh since forever. I am. I'm not. Um, that we've been you know, trying to get, you know, Lynn is really trying to get this done and, and the need is there. I, I guess, I mean, it's, a, it's the biggest item on the list, but I, so, so that's certainly true, but um, if that work can get started sooner rather than later, I think that will help our town office okay. be running better. Okay, I, and again, I, I'm not questioning the legitimacy of the program or the yeah. project, I'm, I'm just, it's, it's by my memory, you don't have many 
special town meeting warrant articles with that kind of a number. Right, but let's get the work started before the, the town uh, budget season starts. And if we can do this now, then we can have work done in November and December and January when it's a little bit quieter. I don't know. I don't know if this will give you comfort or pause, but the finance committee met last night to discuss these, and they approved. It's that, that, fine, but I know. <laughs> I mean, that's why I said comfort or pause. I'm not sure which one. Uh, the other or neither. neither. Or neither. Neither. They did their job. The other, I think the, the ball is rolling on this, and I, I guess Lynn has been talking with 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 the contractor to do this, and I guess this is the price today. It may change in six months. Okay, let's just keep moving on then. Okay. Article 5, see if the town will vote to transfer the sum of $5,072 from available funds to pay for the operating expenses of the South County Senior Center. Take any act, other action relative there too. So is this above and beyond their, the budget amount that was approved at town meeting? Or yeah, what? it is. Yes. Okay. They need additional funds. The, the, the budget, the budget that was, that was there were there were errors in accounting, dramatic errors in accounting done by a variety of responsible individuals who will go nameless. Uh, so the people in charge of hiring the people have been sacked. <laughs> <laughs> Article six. Who are you talking about? Your Monday Python reference there. Yep. Article, Article six. six. Um, we all approved this and said it was great, and then I forgot to put it on the annual town meeting more. And this is to transfer the sum of $5,000 from the Water Department Enterprise Fund to their truck replacement fund. So this is really just making amends for something I forgot. Okay. It's something that should have been done in April, but. And then seven? Article seven, you might recall when when the select board signed the deed to the select board for the Waitley Town Hall to satisfy the Bass Historic Commission, which uh -huh. is, yeah, I won't say it's a sham conveyance, but it's, I think there's a nicer term for that, um, an ineffective conveyance, but town council recommends that, that, that we get confirmation from, uh, from the voters of this conveyance. So I'll explain that better at special town meeting, but essentially that's what we're trying to do here. Is a little bit of legal cleanup. Okay. Okay. So we have it on record that people voted to accept the town hall deed. That they accepted the town hall deed, which didn't convey anything, but any anyway. bureaucratic bureaucratic gobbledygook. And then the last one, Article Eight. There's no way here. There's no here. Oh, I sent it to you. Oh. Sent it to you late. But I will read it. Jonathan should know what it says. Okay. Oh, yes. So, I sent it in an email once I could have time to process the request. This was a requ It's essentially a request from the Rec Commission to expand the member, uh, member of number, number of members from seven to nine. So it requires a bylaw amendment. So the article Article 8 reads, to see if the town will vote to amend the general bylaw of the town by amending Chapter 43 Recreation Commission by deleting lined out words and replacing words with in underlying italics pool. Should commi be committee, not commission. Um, I believe. I'll, let me double check the bylaw. I'll double check the bylaw for that. Okay. So it's essentially there's, so this is Chapter 43-1, uh, 43, dash one establishment slash membership there's hereby established a recreation commission and i'll check that in the town of whaley to consist of seven which is struck out nine inserted in its place members to be appointed by the board of selectmen to serve as an advisory committee on all matters involving recreation and related activities do we have nine people who want to do this why why do we want to go to nine because the rec committee, in my opinion, is the single most, other than the school committee and this board, is the single most, it's the committee that touches the most people in town. Uh, it is a committee that is typically made up of 
people who are both parents of young children and working adults, um, which is a formula for not having any time to do anything. So to actually accomplish something, you need more hands than uh, ordinary because seven people you meet, but then no one has time to do anything. So this right. will allow more hands to divide up what is a tremendous amount of work. Is there, are, are there nine people who want to serve? The jury's out on that one. Is there seven now that are on? There are seven on it now, but the point is, is that, is that people are scared off because of the amount of work. And, and then it's a different, it's a, it's a better problem to have trying to fill nine than having seven, and, and it just doesn't, it's also, it's, 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 a, it's an ongoing effort that is, that's 12 months a year, and because people's schedules are very cyclical in nature, you could have, if you don't have enough people to, to, to do something throughout the winter or whatever, you've got a, a, or the spring, which is more typical, you've got a, a dead committee, and it's a committee that really has more demands on it than any other committee in town because you know, we're, we're touching 130 children a year. Okay. I, I guess I, I don't have a problem going away from seven to nine. I, I guess what I like to, I like to see also if, if we do this, and I think I made this comment in the last meeting or two, is uh, some description of what the committee does. Yeah, you can tell me all this and, and how much involvement they do, but I think to attract members you know, something needs to be online. What are the responsibilities of this committee? What are they responsible for? Just, I, I, I don't know, mowing the field or raking the field or making sure the, the field is, is cleaned up after events, uh, handing out uniforms or, or scheduling. I, I don't know. I, I'm not complaining that that doesn't get done, but I, I'd like to see something identified like that so people know and, and you may get more interest that way if people know what they're committing for. And, and maybe gives your, your current committee members a, a better understanding what they're supposed to be doing or not doing. And I, I guess my, the, the, I also have made that comment for other committees too that don't have enough members. Uh, you I need thought Amy was gonna do that. You need to do, you need to do something like that, but, but if it's coming up now for this one, maybe that's a good time you know, to, a good way to attract the two more members to tell them what, what are you looking for them to do? Well, then I would suggest that once we add the eighth and ninth members, maybe one of them would do that. Well, but it, right now there's there's no capacity. On, I'm the chair of the committee. Fred, I guarantee you I am not going to do that. <laughs> I don't oh, have do, the time. Do you have two people that are interested? or I have one. And I'm not worried about, I will find a second. That's not okay. the point of this. But I can't add the one until we expand. Okay. Right. I'm okay with doing this. Just, just a, to remind her to, to John and, and anyone out there who does a little bit of math, seven times zero is the same as nine times zero. Okay? Yeah. I hope this works. I do too. Great commission. But, uh, but, and I think because it's sort of an organic solution that you guys came up with, not something that's being proposed for me outside, that it had a much better chance of working than it might, you know, just on the surface look like. Um, but so, so I say best of luck with that. But, you know, seven times zero equals nine times zero, right? I'm 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 well aware, but, the, but there's <laughs> and there's and there's going to be turnover in the on the rec committee as well. So yeah, yeah. Okay. And if it, if it helps get more people involved, then that's. I, that's you can only we got to try something. Yeah. All right. Um, is that it for the warrant? Yeah. So are you comfortable signing this, and I will make those corrections to the front page? Yeah. Okay. I am. The front page for the first two articles. Yeah. Okay.
All right, um, contract negotiations for Union 38. In your packet, we have letters from Interim Superintendent of Schools, Darius E. Modesto. It is contract negotiation season. So, as I understand it, and I was not around for the first, or the most recent time this happened, is that the four towns need to appoint a representative uh, for the frontier regional negotiations. And last time it appears, the letter says it was Tom Fight and Kevitz. Um, so. Is he still willing to do it? Um, I have not heard. Uh, no. Okay. So. The answer's no. No. Let me, let me. On a negotiating committee, there are not the municipal representatives, but there are representatives from each of the towns. School committees? School committees, I believe, yes. Is that an accurate yeah. statement? Okay. Yeah. Yet, the organizations uh, that actually control the purse strings collectively only get one negotiating representative am i missing anything are you missing anything i don't believe so no. i think i'm i think i'll agree with what you're about to say is this massachusetts general law or is this frontier regional school district i disagree we'd have to look at i'd have to look in the agreement and i'm happy to look because i think it's a little unbalanced a, a little unbalanced is I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be nice. Very diplomatic. But this impacts all four towns' entire budgets. And if I sat on this committee, which I won't, but if I, but I, I might say, yes, they deserve all the money in the world, but each town should have a seat at that table from the perspective of the organization that has the fiduciary responsibility. Uh, this this puzzles me a little, Jonathan, because I was on one of these committees the, the first year. As was I. Selected I. when I think Paul Newland, or was it? Yeah, Paul had it, and when he left, and I went to some of these meetings. I I, I think the other three towns had somebody there, but they. That was probably the uh, the elementary school right no, association. No, it was Frontier. I went to to Frontier because they hired a consultant. To do the, to make proposals, and it was it was uh, well. The, but let's keep yes. Uh, the two groups, and and I I don't know why now there's only one representative. Well, well, let's be clear. There is one representative for the Frontier Regional School Committee negotiations with the Frontier Regional Teachers Association. Yeah. There is a representative for from each of the towns for the Union Thirty Eight. Okay, maybe that, negotiation. Maybe yes. That's what I was so there is a okay. difference. Why? Why? There's a difference. I don't know. But so I would argue that that the Union Thirty Eight School Committee letter is spot on. It's the Frontier Regional that is a little um, skewed with its numbers. Okay. I suspect it has to do with the well, fact that okay, true. Frontier Regional is, in some ways, its own operating entity. They don't raise their own revenue. Well, they don't. No, they don't. Right, but they don't think it's like their the chapter money goes straight to them and not through the towns like it does for the elementary schools. Yes, I believe so. I mean, it's a different kind of legal entity than our elementary. Absolutely, it is. Yeah, yeah, I get that. And I'm just sort of making a point, Joyce. So, so, so we have, so, so I believe on, on Frontier, we have two other school committee, town people that will be involved in negotiations, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Um, so they sh should be representing the interests of the town, mm -hmm. I would think. By that argument, so should the school committee on the, on the other side, I mean. I would, I would, it's the same, I would hope so. It's the same structure, it's just a different. So, I think we should appoint 
but I think we should ask the question and say, why not? And if you don't give us an answer, I, I'm not going to be comfortable with winning the next time. Yeah, which, which one are we talking? Well, we got to do both. Well, with Frontier, it's, it's going to take some coordination. We don't have, they need to be appointed before the November 13th, 2018 meeting. It's going to take coordination between the four towns so that we all appoint the same person. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so you know, Phil Cantor, Phil Cantor was appointed is, for Conway. Is pushing for it. But I, I've, I've met Phil twice, so I don't know um, if that's a good choice or a bad choice. This I mean. is not a reflection on Phil at all, who I know, and he's a good guy. But I wonder whether the representative. Is he still on the Conway School Committee, or is he no, no longer on the school? No, he's still on, and he's on the Frontier School Committee. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I think the representative needs to be someone who is not also in, and has never served on the school committee just to provide some balance to perspective. I do know he's going, I haven't listened to their meeting, he's going after, similar to what our I believe our personnel committee did. He's going after the Frontier Union's sick leave policy because apparently the schools are getting clobbered with it. You know, where they can carry on like 50 days into retirement and then lump sum payment. He's trying, like we did. He's trying to cap that. Yeah, yeah, which is good. Yeah, I know that's his push. Right, and, and again, it's not, I feel, it feels a great guy, but I'm just, I, I don't know. Well, do you want to do it? No, I, I can't do one of them. Yeah, I, I don't want to do it I, I have a conflict, because my well, wife's going to be on one of them. I think Joyce is going to be here, so there's three here that can well, do it. Well, if, the, you know, if I can miss the first meeting or two, I think there's usually only, there's not a lot of meetings before Christmas, and most of them are, are after. Um, so if missing that first meeting is okay with, with folks, then, and I can catch up with uh, whoever the school committee member is on the Union 38 uh, about what is happening, then um, I'm willing to do that. But just with the provided that I won't make a November or a December meeting unless the December meeting is after Christmas. I, I'm fine with it. Again, I, I, I feel like I'm conflicted out because I got to believe that since my wife is CC'd on this letter that she will be serving on the committee. Uh, so Joyce, are you volunteering for the for the Waitley Elementary School one? Yeah, the Union Thirty Eight one. Union yeah, 38. I've done that before. Okay, yeah. That and that one would be appointed by this board. That is correct. So I make a motion to appoint Joyce Palmer Fortune as the municipal representative to the Union Thirty Eight School Committee negotiations for uh, its teachers and instructional and ass instructional assistants. Second. All those in favor, Fred. Aye. Joyce. Aye. Me, aye. So why don't we table the Frontier um, appointment and I'll try to come to some consensus on with the other towns or do we want to say we're okay with Phil or do we want to see what Deerfield wants to do? Well, is Joyce or what someone wants to do? Is Joyce interested in this? Mm -hmm. Oh, um, I've not done a frontier one before. Um, I'm not sure the other towns will think I'm tough enough, but uh, <laughs> uh, that's. Uh, I mean, I don't mind getting involved for that. You could submit your uh, name and see and what it, happens. My, my yeah, my understanding from what Brian had said was that. Phil was appointed for the Union 38. Well, he's, he's, not, he's putting his hat in the ring. He's putting his hat in the ring from Conway. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, well, I would be okay with putting my hat in the ring and would not be incredibly disappointed if someone else got the job. But, we, have, we have a slugfest. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I've done Union 38 once before. Um, uh, I feel like that's a little bit of experience to help with the, the frontier one. Okay. I don't know if I can feel Tom Fike have his shoes, either literally or figuratively. <laughs> Maybe with both feet. 
We haven't but seen. But I would, I would like before we before we act as a board, I would like to find out why. And there may be a very valid reason why each town is not represented. Is this state law or is this union th or uh, uh, frontier press? The frontier regional government, possibly. Okay. Um, all right. Warrant for state election, make the sign. Yep. Disaster Mitigation Grant Program Award? Yep. So a couple months ago we applied and a bunch of other towns applied as well. Um, the Franklin Regional Council of Governments really spearheaded this effort and they'll likely be the ones that, that would want to help us do this but this is to up, <clears throat> update the town's hazard mitigation plan. Um, so the reason keeping a, a plan current is that it makes you eligible for FEMA funding. This is the type of funding that the town um, used when the Mill River decided to change course next to the, the town's wells. Yeah. Um, so we were awarded a grant of uh, $9,000 from FEMA uh, to update uh, our plan, what, what we offered. So it's a 75% uh, percent uh, they'll pay 75% of the total project cost. The total project cost is, is going to be estimated to be $12,000, but we can, we can um, and we're going to use in-kind contributions to cover that $3,000. Um, so in-kind contributions, meaning we'll have department heads read the plan and mark down their hours and they can charge, they can charge it off that way. So we need to send a contract for it. Okay. Well, actually, I think just Jonathan needs to sign it. When, when's the, what's the date of the current plan? Or when does it expire? Or what, when was it developed or whatever? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. It, yeah, I think it expires in 2018. Oh, okay. So I think they're good for four years, so maybe 2014. They're good for four or five years. Four or five yeah, years, yep. okay. All right, yeah. and then while I'm signing this, reappointment of Julie Wagner to the Cultural Council. I would make a motion to do that. Second. All those in favor? Fred? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Me? Aye. All right, here's the scary part of the meeting where we ask Brian okay. if he really wants to give us any updates. How much you sign everything? Is that blue? I guess blue. Because this one, this is one of these archaic ones that you have to sign a blue ink. I like blue ink. All, all green little spots? Yeah. It's the fun of being the chairperson. I know. You get a couple of tunnel syndrome. All right, town administrator updates. You don't have any? <clears throat> You're signing, I got some time. Mm. Um, Wait, I just lost my little thing here. Whaley Elementary School sprink sprinkler system. I know you guys have all been waiting to hear about this. So the system has, the. I'm told the entire system has been flushed. Um, it knocked out a lot of sediment and black stuff that was clogging up the system. And when they did that, of course, they, um, they found additional leaks in the, um, in the system. Those have been repaired. Some sections of piping have been repaired. So from that standpoint, um, those tasks have been um, completed. And now the, um, the school is getting uh, quotes to measure and replace the sprinkler heads. So that should be done. If I was to guess, hopefully over um, a winter vacation is probably a realistic time as to when they could get in that building. Uh, but I don't know that for sure. You involved in those schools? No. Uh, manganese filtration project. The water commissioners decided to reduce the scope of the project and they're going to put it out um, 
for bid, you'll recall that the bids came in. Um, if we're including contingencies, probably under twenty thousand dollars over our available funds. Um, but there's ways to reduce the scope of the project and rebid, so they'll be doing that. Um, complete streets. This, we had a, the select board had a meeting last Friday morning that was not televised because it was Friday at nine, but. It, the business that we conducted there was to sign a grant application for $297,000 to complete nine projects uh, through Mass DOT's Complete Streets program. And uh, really the linchpin of that application is, is would be money for new sidewalks in the center of town from the center school and on either side the cemetery up to Haydenville Road. So we should hear about that in a couple, I think they said around two months turnaround for that. Um, Two other things uh, quickly. The Ad Hoc Veterans Committee is still meeting. We talked a little bit about this this past spring in terms of the, the Veterans Monument and wanting to redesign that. Um, they were able to um, get a student from the Conway School of Design to um, help them design that space as their senior project. It's similar to what was done for the center of town, the larger center of town uh, project that was done. Um, I don't know when that would be, 2016 maybe. Um, so they're having a, an almost landscape architect, I guess, help with the design of that. And just for your calendars, I know you, I know this is exciting to everybody, but there's gonna be a public, a mass DOT public hearing on November 8th at 7 p.m. at the Deerfield Town Hall in relation to the resurfacing of routes five and 10 and a portion of that will take place in Waitley. I'm sure it'll be really thrilling, so. What portion in Waitley, do you know where it starts? I think, um, I haven't, if my memory serves me right, it's gonna be, um, it's certainly gonna be north of um, Christian Lane. I think it's a lot further up by the diner. Also oh, um, somewhere near the diner. Yeah. I believe it's gonna be up there. Yeah, because they stopped up there. Just before the diner on their last resurgence. Yeah. So it'll be yeah. from the bridge north, bro. I believe so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Which, since we're talking about the DOT, which reminds me that um, I don't know whether anyone else has noticed, but over the past probably six months or so, the motion sensor on the traffic light on the on ramp or off ramp, I should say, traffic light from exit 24 doesn't appear to be working anymore. This thing is on I don't know what the what the catch is for the light to turn but it, taking a left there no taking going straight left. yeah or going left off the highway You're taking I think a left it's on a timer now why uh, I think they put it on a timer when they were paving well but we should go back to the sensor because well I don't disagree but I, I think that's what it was literally you sit there and you're looking for somebody to come off the exit ramp and you're begging for the light to be right, and it just doesn't happen. You sit there and you sit there, and then the light switches just as someone's coming up with the exit ramp. <laughs> so I would like to suggest that somebody from this town call District 2 and say, let's get this back to the center because it's not working for anybody. You can ask Keith, I guess, to do that. He's in contact with I can ask him. I can ask him. Right. Too. And if they don't want to make that switch, then we can take it to a higher authority. But it, it's not working, and it's not working. Staying there a lot, huh? And it's not working. <laughs> All right. All right. Motion to adjourn. Right. So, so oh. next meeting is the twenty fourth at six in town special town meeting at seven. Is that the plan? Or is it the other way? No, I thought that was the plan. That's select the plan. board meeting at six. Select board meeting at six. Special town meeting at seven. And we will not reconvene back. We will not reconvene. Okay. okay. And where is that uh, meeting going to take place? That can be in the same room. I believe it's going to happen here. here. Yeah, it's going to happen in the same room. Okay. Not All happening right. upstairs at the. Uh... Very that many people. Okay. No, because it's a nice building. And, you know. I know. All right. And for the, the for meeting on the 14th, 
I guess I have a, a conflict. Uh, I'd like to change that to seven o'clock rather than six. On November 14th. On November 14th. Do you want to switch the date? Or switch the date. No. It's one or, one or the other. <coughs> How late does that put it for you, Joyce? Seven o'clock. <laughs> Seven o'clock is one one a.m. for me. Joyce does Nat just laugh at you every other Wednesday when we have these meetings <laughs> as he as he no. trundles off to bed. He actually uh, doesn't sleep that well when I'm talking in the next room. So <laughs> so he goes to the bar. Mm, no, no, he's trying to sleep. Which is why I'm not speaking particularly loudly. But, All right, so. Yeah. Um, if we can change the date, I prefer that. But if the only solution is to meet at seven, then let's hope we'll hopefully have a short agenda. How about Tuesday the thirteenth? That that's because any of those frontier meeting, right? Yeah. What is frontier capital improvement committee meeting? Monday. Oh, Monday the twelfth is not an option because that's going to be Veterans Day observed. I'm sure. So the fifteenth, I guess we could do. Yes. No, I can't. I have a skim board of oversight meeting. What time is that start? That starts at six. Wait, so I'm confused. What's Tuesday? That's the Frontier Capital Planning School Committee Finance Committee. Yeah, meeting. Yeah. I don't know about that. Was that a notice that was sent out somewhere? Not yet, that's but it will be. So how do we know about it already? It's proposed already. He's on the committee. On the committee. Oh, you're on capital plan? Yes. Oh. What time is well, that at? Yeah. 5.30 like or 6? The 14th is going to work. 7, you wrote 7? Well, we've been meeting earlier. I don't know. I, I mean, yeah, I, okay. if we're meeting the, if we were to meet the 14th, we were going to have two weeks in between meetings. So we could always move it up to the, Seventh, I guess. That's fine by me. The seventh and the uh, twenty-eighth. Yeah. Seventh is fine for me too. Yeah. Okay, that would work. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's do that. Seventh. Seventh at six. Okay. All right. Motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Fred. Aye. Joyce. Me, I, good night and good luck. <laughs>